Went and got that open. millimeter for that I believe. Yep. Now before I crack this open before I crack the bleeder or the brake line open I put a clamp on which is just a pair of needle nose vice grips with some rubber hose to protect it. And grab the cradle hold of the hose up here where it's going to be out of the way. Try to make sure it's tight enough to not let the fluid through but not so tight that you crush the hose. Of course it didn't, but that's okay. okay so let's snug that back up just one tenth of a hugga dugga. I'll clean this all up with a brake cleaner. Get this great old good doo doo out of here. Where is that? I feel like it's twisted. is upside down. <laughs> See you in a moment. This is not that any of that matters. Okay, let's get the 17 on here. We're taking this whole bracket assembly and everything right off all the way shots anyways. Nothing left here. There's a wheel speed sensor. 
a ring. <laughs> you can go out and pick out one of these little cubes in a variety of different places. This is primitive, but you find the uh, pattern that sits in that piston, like so. so in there nice and firmly. So we got the four, two more little ones. We're going to have to rotate this piston so that these four little hash marks are straight up and down and across. Sometimes you need this to help, but never use this to apply pressure to the piston. You don't want to push the piston back, you want to rotate the piston back. That's critical. So what I like to do is usually not have the bracket in the way. So let's get the bracket out of the way first. Power tools, let's use them. It's almost straight up and down. Let's go a little more. You got a notch right here you want to line them up with. Just like that. Now we can get the caliper bracket ready. A couple things. A. Make sure there's grease on these. There's hardly anything on it, so we're going to add to that. Silaglide. And we're going to put a little extra silaglide on each of these pins. This one here has got a rubber piece on it. You want to make sure that you're always using something that's a rubber safe lubricant. And it's time to go grab the new tube. some anti seeds so they don't rust up and rush jack the pads in place. coating across everything that the, the hardware clips are going to be coming in contact with. So we don't have any rust getting underneath. Squishing them up into the brake pads and pinning them. So the caliper bracket is now ready to go back in. Let's get the rotor cleaned up.
Take the caliper bracket bolts, put a little drop on each one. And we'll bolt that bracket in place. I know the lighting's a little strange, but it's what I've got to work with. Get this right here. Probably should put the clips on first and not get any of that gunk on the uh, rotor. Let's get the hardware clips out of the little baggie. Four little clips. The caliper comes with a pair of clips, but I'm going to use the clips that come with the brakes so that we're uniform on both sides. clips into the bracket. Trying to do this upside down. I can't see what I'm doing. We can, there we go. Now we got both of the clips in. We can go ahead and put the caliper bracket in place now. Both of our bolts in place. See, there's that bottom one right there. Let's get that one started. Oops. Let's get that one started first. Maybe. Get those 17 millimeter bolts torqued down good and tight. Those are about probably uh, two Agadagas. Salt belt torque increments. Agadagas. Surprised we're not in the title pairs. It's different. That'll work. Uh, let's see. Now we got inboard brake pads. Each one of them's got a squealer on it. The squealer always goes on the wet edge, the leading edge. So we're going to position these. That would be the leading edge down at the bottom. I'm going to position that in there, just like so. It was nice and easy. And then we're going to go on the wrap on the outboard that in place and we're going to take the brand new caliper and set it right over the top of that assembly and don't forget to put this metal clip inside your caliper and remember the long tabs go towards the piston 
you got these little hooks right here on the outside. They hook over the edges of the caliper. They sit like that. They press down here to give a little bit of a spring action on the brake pads to keep them from bouncing around and chattering. Push the pins in. Line them up. And again, using some blue thread locker. One drop on each of the new bolts. started into the caliper, caliper bracket, same thing with the other one. Run them all the way down in finger tight. We can go ahead and snug these down. Tighten these up. Remember those were 14 millimeter. Those are about one agadaga. Make sure everything moves freely again. Okay. I don't know if these lug nuts will bottom out. Yeah, I would imagine they probably will. I'll try spinning one all the way on and see what happens. Didn't make the rotor tight, but that bottom of the nut gently. Now, that's new caliper on. Now let's get the uh, hose hooked up. Now let's make sure, first and foremost, that our hose is clean and free of debris. Banjo bolt. It's a long banjo bolt. Take one of the copper washers off. Banjo bolt through. You'll find it's pretty natural position. This one was actually 180 out when we first removed it. Get that banjo bolt started in there. And that banjo bolt all the way down. And these are tightened down to about, I believe, somewhere in the 18 to 20 foot pound area. The idea is, is squash the washers just a little bit without breaking the bolt. Now we still have the clamp on the brake line. I'm going to let that back just a little bit. Actually, let's work this parking brake all the way out first to get the pistons seated. Let's get this parking brake hose hooked up. The, the cable. So let's see if I can get you an angle in here for the cable. That's gotta be fun. Okay, so now to be able to get this in here, let's get it on this hook up here first. Just like that. Oh, that boot is nasty. And then we're gonna pull back on this cable, pull down on it. Get it over this lip. If I can get my hand in here around the camera.
Partway there. Now I just gotta get it the rest of the way so that little lip lines up and it drops in. Now put that silly little clip back in. This little clip right here. They had that one across this way. Not sure why. Anything acts as a hammer. Make sure that's all the way seated down. Yep. Now your brake cable's all hooked up. Any luck I can get this done without strobing too much because of that light. All right, we'll get this little rubber plug off. Don't lose that. Loosen up the bleeder screw. Press the pedal down. Yeah. Hold it. Now release the clamp on the hose. That pedal drop. Lift it back up. All right, push it back down. Got pressure? Tons of pressure. All right, let it back up and push it back down again and hold it. Okay. Now it sank. Okay, I'm just making sure we're getting fluid through the line and no air bubbles. All right, let's get the bleeder hose hooked up. into a suitable empty container, in this case an empty brake fluid container. And let it up, we'll go ahead and pump it freely. You see the bubbles coming up through. Oh, nice pot. A lot of bubbles right there. Okay, hold up. Let's check your brake fluid and make sure it's full. Stop pumping and yep. put it down. Just leave it up. Oh. Now, let's see. Fresh brake fluid. Okay, push it down and hold it. Okay, just wanted to make sure that the piston, the piston was moving. All right, go ahead and... Uh, Pump it two or three times. Yep. And hold it down nice and firm. Yep. And still some air in there. Okay, we're done with the line pliers. Okay, go ahead and pump it two or three times. Uh, no, just keep pumping it. Trying to dislodge any of the bubbles that are stuck inside of it. Okay, go ahead and pump it twice and then hold it down firm. Okay. No air bubbles in there. Oh, there's some air bubbles. Alright, let it back up. Pump it twice and then hold it down. malfunction. Okay, let it back up, pump it twice. And hold it down. How's it feel? Okay, good. Now that we're done bleeding the brake, make sure that the bleeder screw is nice and snug. Take your bleeder hose off. Carefully let it drain down into your, your recovery 
key canister. And we're going to take that little rubber cap that we took off, put a little bit of so glide inside the cap. bleeder that'll help keep it from rusting up or in future bleeding clean up the tools put the wheel back on get the other side done and that's how you replace the caliper hook it up to the parking brake cable bleeding out the line putting in new brakes and just generally cleaning everything up and reconditioning the hub You know you're missing a lug nut on this side, right? We got four on this side and five, five on the other. What you doing now, man? Ah, uh, caliper was leaking on this one. Get the jack out of the car. Go so until the axle comes off. Around. Jack in. There we go. subscribe I'd like to see some comments from you guys and don't forget you got no more excuses pick up those wrenches guys can plainly see, it's kind of fun to do in the dark. That's the uh, left rear caliper on your 1998 Nissan. That's your back left caliper on your 1998 Nissan L. He's on Maxima.